Hey Eric. What's up? Have you ever thought about how it all started? Where we're all going in this point A to point B mission? No! The Project Hate is a band that a lot of people will know at least by reference. Um, they started in the mid early 2000s uh, with a string of releases that had a lot of industrial influences behind them, uh, a lot of progressive influences as well here and there, uh, transitioning between different genres even within these whole 10 minute massive scope songs. Um, it was impressive to say the least. There wasn't a band that could kind of pull that off within an album and, and do it as, uh, as feasibly as they did, as cohesively. Um, so it was kind of saddening that with, within the uh, last couple of releases, it seems like the band had fallen off. Um, uh, Kentha, the main songwriter behind the band, had uh, let go his maybe third or fourth female vocalist. Oh, they're on the fourth or fifth, maybe. Yeah. They've been going through female vocalists like crazy. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, it seemed like with the last couple of releases, we started to notice some of the, the chinks in the armor here, uh, especially when it came to the female vocalist involved and her really just lack of range in general. Um, she just seemed incapable of bringing anything to the fold that somebody else in the band hadn't done infinitely better. And so with that in mind, we moved into the new set of releases and this new album and just started to see how everything unfolded with, uh, with the mastermind behind it, his Lord Majesty, Tyrese Gibson, Kentha Phillipson, uh, really getting absolutely paranoid uh, about the release schedule, about what reviewers were saying about his last release. The last re release was inarguably one of the worst releases they've ever released. It was plotting, it was slow, it was boring, it was it was absolutely undynamic in almost any sense of the word. Um, and of course it had row, row, row your boat melodies in it that were uh, calling them kindergarten level melodies. There was an actual yeah. section with a kindergarten song in it. Row, yeah. row, row your boat down the street. Yeah, very apt. So, Bearing all that in mind, we were led into the, the newest CD of Chaos and Carnal Pleasures. Um, now this release was actually released independently, just like the last three, but this one seems even, even more difficult to find and track down. There were no singles released, there were no release uh, reviews, and there was definitely no kind of hype in any sense. I had no I idea it was yeah. coming out until, I believe it had already come out by the time we realized right. it. Nobody knew anything about it, and that really made it difficult to really form any kind of basis for the review here. Um, especially considering that, uh, uh, what's his name again? Uh, uh Lord Kendrick? Kenneth yeah. Philipson? Yeah. Con Conca, uh, that Conca, he wanted all this money. He uh, wanted it specifically sent to a PayPal account, and then at his leisure, he would then send you the, a copy of the CD, which, I mean, I, I don't know him all that well. He, he runs an industrial death metal group. I, I don't really have any basis for trust here. I, I don't know him on a personal level or anything like that. Um, so I found it really difficult to get behind it. Uh, so here we are with a copy of the CD, and how did it turn out? How does it compare to the last CD, which is arguably shit recorded onto a disc? Um, I mean, I, I feel like you could sum this album up with the deepest, saddest shrug possible, because it just feels so disappointing in every sense of the word, from the production to the songwriting, to the vocals, to the, every aspect of the album, really. Let's start with the biggest issue. The biggest issue for me is by far the new female, not new female vocalist, she's been on the last album, but she is terrible. Eleanor Asp has no place in this project at all. No. They've never really had an amazing female vocalist, but they at least had dynamics, they had range. Right. Her approach seems really, really forced, and I'm not sure if she writes her own lyrics or if Lord uh, uh, Cabal Smith writes the lyrics himself, but they have been laughable on the last two albums yeah and she is all over the place like she tries these weird things with her voice and it's just she is not a good singer she's not a good fit for this 
She seems like she might be a better fit for a cheesy heavy metal cover band or something like that. She's just not good. Yeah, they, they kind of scattershot her approach to the CD, and I almost wonder if it's kind of an attempt to kind of mask some of her weaknesses as a vocalist. Uh, there's a lot of production tricks on here as well. There is one particular style I feel like she does semi-okay. Uh, she gets some of the industrial aspects right, which have always been a, a really large uh, influence, very large aspect on the Project Hates material. But the biggest issue I feel with that is that there are no fucking industrial elements at no. all on the CD. No. You've got a couple different synth uh, patterns uh, kind of dotted in and out of some of these instrumentals, but it doesn't really lead to anything in particular, especially on the first uh, track on the album. The first track on the album has these little synth dots that start up, and as soon as they start up, they end. They don't lead into anything in particular. There's actually, I want to call them rambled vocals, because that's exactly what they are, where Eleanor is essentially just babbling for long periods of time over syncopated riffs, drumming, um, as well as these really loud, bleeding, synthy keyboard areas. And it's just, it's really a disappointment, because when you look at a lot of the Project Hate's uh, recent releases, or at least their early 2000s, late 2000s era material, you're, you're looking at a lot of really well-composed and very ebb and flow-esque uh, tracks, but, but but this doesn't have that. It doesn't feel written in any sense of the word. No, I agree with you. I feel like the lack of industrial parts really hurts this album. Yeah. Whereas the early to mid to even a couple albums ago had a lot of uh, almost drum and bass like breaks with right. industrial parts behind yeah, yeah, them. What happened to all that? What happened to all that? There are a lot of different parts going on in this album, but there's the industrial parts gone and the parts that are influenced by other genres just don't really go anywhere. They don't pay off. Right. The third track actually has a Middle Eastern break towards the beginning of the track that immediately dissolves into something boring and erratic and generally just uninteresting. And that's this entire album in a sense. Uh, a lot of really solid parts uh, just kind of cut up into transitionary elements and then uh, led into extremely uninteresting and plotting death metal elements. You can really look at the first track and get a really good summary of the events of the album. You've got this really slow plotting uh, death metal riff that goes into a, a whole lot of other elements that don't really add up to anything in particular. Uh, you, you've got all of these really hokey, cheesy keyboards, uh, piano really, uh, with Eleanor just kind of moaning over the top of it like a cat in heat. And it's, it's just, it's not entertaining in any sense. I feel like most of those problems could be fixed by making the song shorter. Another huge reason this album just doesn't click with me is all the songs are over 11 minutes long. The long, the shortest song is 11.30, I believe. It's extremely long. It's extremely long, so you have all these songs that just flow all over the place, but they all kind of sound the same, even though they all have different elements in them, because they just are meandering. They right. don't have any direction at all. They're all the same length. They should at least go back to the old days when they made seven-minute songs, eight right. minute songs, and then the occasional 12-minute songs. Right. You can't differentiate between any of these songs. No. They're all the same, essentially, other than here and there, like David was saying. There's a Middle Eastern part as well as some other parts we'll get into that are very interesting. But for the most part, six songs... An hour 20 minutes, an hour 15 minutes, I believe it is. 15, yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous, and I just, I could barely make it through the album. No, it was an absolute chore to sit through this entire album from front to back. I had to break it up into small instances, one and one and one and one, and it's just, it, it's absolutely unbearable, and that's extremely disappointing. Because I feel like with a band with such massive potential and a lot of really solid albums under their belt, um, you feel like there needs to be something that everything kind of rises up to. Uh, but unfortunately, with all the aspects at play here, just all the sloppy songwriting, um, uh, just the absolutely crude implementation of the female vocals, if we can call them female vocals, um, I, it's just a very underwhelming experience. Um, and, and that's that's the the biggest thing here is that it, we're not we're not intentionally shitting on the album. We're both massive fans of the band, um, but it, it's hard to see where he's coming from and taking the music as just music instead of just a statement on his behalf. Um, obviously there's been a lot of lead up with him going to war with the music industry and I think the biggest issue here is that it feels less like an album and it feels more like him trying to say something set to really plotting boring instrumentals. Uh, 
Um, there's just nothing being said here, not from a philosophical standpoint, not from a lyrical standpoint, not from a songwriting perspective, not from a compositional standpoint. There, there is absolutely nothing of interest or substance to be found in this album, and that's that, that's heartbreaking for both of us. It really is. It is. It is. There is some good though. Yeah. There is a bit of good. It's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. You have to sift through, and frankly, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, yeah. there is plenty of variation even though you're lacking the industrial elements, which, which essentially made the band unique, right. and made them what they were. And you have amazing bass presence on a lot of the songs, like oh, halfway yeah. through Sulphur, which is the best song in the album. If you're going to listen to one song in the album, listen, listen to it Sulphur. Yeah. Sulphur is by far the best song. It's, it's, it would definitely be on, up there with some of their older stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. But other than that, there's really not much to say good. No. Uh, yeah, it's got really good bass tone. Um, it, it does have some really overproduced drumming th all throughout. I don't know if that's actually uh, program drumming or actual... No, you're right, it has the uh, drummer from Megadeth. That's right. I yeah. just remember that. Um, the vocals are also essentially extremely overprocessed. Um, I mean, they're as good as they've ever been, but they can be extremely monotonous throughout. Um, they're broken up, of course, but I mean, really... I, I'm having trouble just finding anything good to say about the album in general. Um, as opposed to maybe the last couple of CDs, though, it even feels like a dip in quality from those. Um, there's just there's just nothing at all dynamic about anything going on here. It's it's like listening to sand through an hourglass. I feel like I've wasted so much time out of my life I'm just trying to find something that really isn't there. There's there's just nothing at play here that would that would make me think or develop any. Any kind of exterior uh, thought process at all? I just, I. Yeah, frankly, this album put me to sleep. Which, yeah. From an industrial death metal band is a pretty harsh thing to say. Right. The fact that we we are having difficulties even talking about the album, discussing the album. I can't remember the name. I can't remember the tracks. Everything in and of this album, including the marketing perspective, everything about it, just makes me want to forget. I want to forget that this came out. I want to forget the last one came out. Hell, I want to forget the one before that came out, and that one was just okay. I feel like it's dishonoring a legacy. And that at this point, we're just going off on a tangent that really didn't need to be gone off on in the first place, and I'm really disappointed in uh, Lord K. Masterson Phillips' Argonaut III. I'm, I'm, I'm really just... If you're watching, sir, please stop. Please. Um, I want to give this album a four. I... I could I could really go lower and I could really be just even more vitriolic about it, but I I'm gonna leave it at that. I I just I'm I'm done. That's that's that. I can't do any more of their stuff. I'll go even lower than than that. I'm gonna give it a three. Yeah. I mean it was a total struggle. Yeah. Every single time I listened to it, less than halfway through I wanted to turn it off. Yeah. So Yeah, it, it felt like a literal Greek Odyssey just traveling from point A to point B. It's just, it's so fucking arduous in every sense of the word. And, uh, yeah, it, if you haven't heard anything about it or you were curious about it and just based on the fact that there's no singles, there's been no samples, there's been no reviews, uh, just take it from us that there's really nothing of any interest here. There's no value loss in not listening to it. You can go about your merry way and live a wonderful, enthralling life having never listened to this album at all. So uh, let's leave it on that note. Let's leave it on a brown note. The way the album opens really on a brown note. Um, back to full circle. So uh, I'm David. I'm Eric. Um, as always, uh, eat a dick. Fuck. Hey guys, uh, David here from Heavy Meta. Um, just wanted to let you know that our uh, promotional that's going on with Satan Water is uh, still in effect. Uh, you can use promotional code Lord Kate Phillips in as a goob, uh, and you'll get 50% off. Uh, all the proceeds go towards getting him uh, a goat of some form, so he can possibly uh, have that bleed on top of his fucking instrumentals. Uh, awesome. Thanks, guys.